welcome to course on advanced geotechnical engineering this is in module 5 on stability of slopes lecture 7. So in the previous lecture we introduced ourselves to different slope stability analysis methods and in this lecture what we do is that we will try to look into the slope stability analysis methods by using uh, some softwares which are basically based on the Geo Studio uh, 2012 and this uh, what we are going to demonstrate in this lecture is that how the effect of uh, anchor will be there on the slope stability and nails uh, you know how the nails can increase the slope stability and then piles as vertical reinforcement that pile members the discreetly placed piles in within the uh, you know row of uh, uh, within the uh, slope area and then finally we look into the stone columns then we look the seismic displacements of the uh, slopes without any strengthening measures okay. So in this particular slide the illustration of the effect of various reinforcement uh, options in maintaining the slope stability are discussed. So the slope stability analysis is performed numerically using uh, limited equilibrium method uh, software and uh, which is a product of uh, slope W by using slope W and is a product of uh, Geo Studio 2012. The following reinforcement options have been considered uh, one is that anchors, nails and piles and stone columns and attempts have been made to uh, compare the analysis results with the uh, let, uh, pub, let, uh, results published in the literature. Attempts have been made to compare the results with the published res, uh, literature results. Now the example problem 1 illustration of the reinforcing mechanism of anchors in slopes this is uh, the theory part we actually have discussed uh, in the pre, uh, previous lectures the according to Kai and Ugai 2003. In this the analysis has been performed on a 8 meter high slope having one vertical one horizontal uh, slope inclination and the analysis was performed by using Bishop's method. The properties and configurations which were actually given by Kai and Ugai 2003 were considered. The installed anchors consists of a tendon of having 6 meter length and 32 mm in diameter and a grouted body of 6 meter, 6 meter long and 90 mm in diameter that means that entire length of the anchor is actually grouted with 90 mm diameter grout and the tendon diameter is about 32 mm and was connected to a rigid circular plate of 300 mm in diameter on the slope surface. So the anchor was actually placed on the slope surface and with different inclinations so different inclinations were considered the anchor orientation with reference to the you know horizontal from varied from 0 to 45 degrees just to see the influence of anchor inclination on the slope stability and its spacing that is the spacing uh, along the slope surface that means that uh, the spacings were actually considered in the range from 1 meter to 3.5 meter. So what will be the you know optimum spacing or what will be the uh, you know spacing effect on the slope stability analysis of uh, uh, you know uh, slope reinforced with the anchor was uh, studied. So this is the input uh, file for the uh, slope W with the anchor uh, used in the uh, slope stability analysis. Uh, and uh, the based on the calculations and details provided by uh, Kai and Vigai 2003 uh, the tensile capacity was given as equivalent to that of uh, the data which was given 1500 kilo Newtons and uh, no reduction factors have been given and the bond diameter as has been told 90 mm diameter grout body so the details have been given bond length that is the entire length is uh, grouted so 6 meters and anchor spacing for this example which is actually shown is 1.5 and uh, factored pull out resistance and maximum pull out resistance where ranges were actually given there. Now this is the FEM mesh of the slope section showing the anchor installed this is a cross section of the uh, you know the slope with uh, anchor and in this uh, particular example uh, the 30 degrees inclination of the anchor with the horizontal was considered. So as it can be seen here. Uh, this is this inclination with the horizontal is uh, 30 degrees and uh, here is the you know plate which is actually placed 
and the the slope configuration which is actually shown here so this is the horizontal distance and this is the elevation and the model is more coulomb and unit weight is 20 kilogram per meter cube and cohesion 12 kilo pascals and friction angle about 20 degrees so this is the analysis was done for comparison purposes with and without anchor so this is the stability analysis results of unreinforced slope and for the configuration which is considered uh, the the least factor of safety uh, is obtained by using Bishop's method as 1.061. So the stability analysis results of the unreinforced slope are shown, and this is the zone of uh, you know the potential uh, failure surface. So this yields a factor of safety of 1.61. Now the similar configuration was analyzed with uh, anchor, wherein uh, in this the anchor is actually inclined uh, at uh, um, 30 degrees. So the factor of safety which is actually shown uh, the is uh, here is 1.2 so there is an improvement in the factor of safety for a given type of uh, nail and uh, for a given type of anchor and uh, for a given in, uh, anchor inclination and it can be seen here the total resisting moment is uh, more than the, the total activating moment. So here uh, the presence of anchor enhances the stability and also contributes to the, the you know the change in the slip surface that means that the slip surface goes away from the face of the slope so this can be uh, you know observed from the cross section which is actually shown here. Now in this uh, particular uh, uh, graph which is actually shown here anchor inclination with uh, horizontal is plotted on the x axis and factor of safety which is nothing but resting moment by driving moment which is obtained. Uh, uh, by Kai and Ugai 2003 and uh, the analysis results were actually compared. So the, in this the parametric uh, study was carried out uh, wherein uh, uh, when anchor inclination is about uh, 0 degrees when anchor inclination is about 0 degrees uh, you know both uh, you know the analysis uh, done by uh, you know FEM analysis was done by Kai and Ugai 2003 and uh, the present uh, analysis found to have uh, you know uh, good agreement. Uh, but that the trend which is actually presented like with an increase in the nail inclination uh, there is uh, an increase in the factor of safety uh, from 0 degrees when the nailing, when the anchor inclination is increased there is uh, an increase in factor of safety and further increase beyond uh, 10 degrees there is a decrease in the factor of safety. So this indicates that there is an optimum uh, you know uh, inclination of the anchor which contributes to the uh, you know the resultant uh, the factor of safety. So here it actually yields both from the Kai and Ugai uh, 2003 and the present analysis by using uh, slope stability slope slope W uh, uh, program it actually says that uh, about 10 to 12 degrees uh, the uh, optimum uh, uh, about 9, 9 to 10 degrees uh, there is an optimum uh, uh, you know uh, factor of safe, nail inclination nail optimum uh, inclination of the anchor where there is an increase in the factor of safety but with an increase in uh, uh, with an increase in the uh, anchor inclination there is a decrease in factor of safety and the similar trend was actually also reported by Kai and Vigai. you can see that with an increase in the anchor inclination there is a decrease in the factor of safety so this uh, lead to you know instability of a slope so one need to consider that in the slope stability analysis by using slope stabilization measures the depending upon the slope configuration with the slope inclination or back slope inclination and one need to understand that there is an importance of this anchor inclination on the slope stability. It is not that you know each and every slope has same anchor inclination that depend upon the type of geometry of the after due analysis. Uh, one need to ascertain the optimum inclinations for the uh, you know given problem. Now in this slide uh, the factor of safety variation with the anchor spacing. So it can be seen that uh, with an uh, increase in anchor spacing from uh, it has been varied from uh, 1 meter to 3.5 meter at uh, 1 meter uh, anchor spacing there is an increase in uh, the factor of safety was about 1.27 but uh, with a uh, an increase in anchor spacing uh, that is the center center distance of the anchor spacing along the uh, length of the slope it appears that uh, there is uh, a decrease in the factor of safety and these analysis results are also found to be in agreement with uh, Kai and Ugai 2003. So 
the uh, in this particular slide the anchor inclination is considered about 15 degrees so for 15 degrees uh, anchor inclination uh, what it can be seen that there is uh, a decrease in the uh, factor of safety with an increase in the anchor spacing. So increase in factor of safety was observed with the decrease in spacing. So it appears that uh, for a given uh, anchor inclination uh, the anchor spacing uh, between 1 to 1.5 meter for the given uh, uh, slope inclination uh, and uh, is, is found to be uh, you know ideal and also it depends upon the one, one also need to consider the position of the anchor also from the distance uh, that means that where we are actually putting the anchor that is at the uh, you know mid distance also in this particular case uh, uh, the anchor was actually located a single row of anchors were located in the uh, mid, uh, mid distance of the slope. Now after having discussed the slope stability analysis uh, problem by using uh, anchors now we, uh, we actually have discussed about uh, influence of nail inclination and influence of uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, layout of the uh, nails on the slope stability uh, this example uh, illustrates uh, the, uh, the reinforcement mechanism of nails in slopes and uh, this basically a 10 meter x squared slope uh, reinforced with four levels of or four rows of nails was considered. considered and uh, the nails are spaced at 1.5 meter in this uh, example and uh, they are out of the plane direction and each nail is approximately uh, about uh, 9.8 meters in length with a bond of diameter of 0.35 meter. The inclination of the nail was kept with respect to horizontal is about 12 degrees and uh, the, uh, for, a, for a difference here the stability analysis was performed by using John Boos method. So in this particular example the reinforcing mechanism of nails in slopes was uh, is discussed and uh, it is a 10 meter high uh, you know excavated slope and uh, with uh, reinforced with four rows of uh, nails and uh, uh, that is uh, at four levels the nails are actually placed generally in the case of uh, excavation as the excavation proceeds uh, the top down approach is adopted the nails were installed and the next level of excavation is done. The nails are spaced uh, 1.5 meter uh, uh, both in horizontal and uh, vertical direction that is SV is equal to SH is equal to 1.5 meter and each uh, nail length is about 9.8 meters that means that about length of the nail is equal to uh, height of the slope was considered and uh, length uh, bond diameter is about 0.35 meter inclination of the nail with the horizontal is about 12 degrees. So this is the uh, you know typical input uh, parameters for the slope W analysis uh, the details were actually given in the as an input for the uh, analysis and this is the uh, you know the typical cross section of an unreinforced uh, slope section wherein uh, the properties which are actually taken are 5 kilo Pascals and uh, 27 degrees is the friction angle and uh, the slope is having uh, uh, you know the inclination which is actually shown in the figure. Uh, with uh, this level at uh, 10 meters and uh, this is uh, uh, the particular inclination is about uh, uh, about uh, 79 degrees between 63 to 79 degrees with horizontal then this is the stability analysis results of the unreinforced slope uh, it can be seen that uh, uh, this particular for this particular height what the type of properties which are given the slope actually has an already uh, you know gone below, below the factor of uh, marginal below the factor of safety of 1. So the stability analysis results of the unreinforced slope uh, cross section is shown here and which actually uh, implies that uh, the slope has already undergone failure. Now the stability analysis results of the reinforced slope are shown where it can be seen that nails inclined at 12 degrees placed at uh, uh, you know distance uh, uh, with 1.5 meter in vertical direction and uh, you can see that uh, these are the length of the nails which are actually taken that is 9.7 meters length of the nails and this is uh, having a 0.35 meter diameter uh, grouted body and uh, this is the you know slip surface which is actually obtained the factor of safety uh, resulting factor of safety is obtained as about 2.158 where the total resisting uh, force is about uh, 1500 kilo Newton and uh, activating force is about 700 kilo Newtons. So this is uh, you know the about the uh, you know the stability analysis of the slope reinforced with uh, nails. 
now uh, this is an example uh, this is example 3 uh, basically this is a illustration of the reinforcing mechanism of piles in slopes and uh, asoids et al 1997 have given uh, the stability analysis of the slopes uh, reinforced with piles uh, by using uh, friction circle method and uh, the similar configuration and properties which are actually given by asoids et al 1997 was considered and uh, this uh, domain uh, comprises a slope of height of 13.7 meter height and angle of 30 degrees the slope is actually having very flat inclination one vertical uh, uh, close to one vertical two horizontal inclination and the piles are assumed to be of about uh, 600 mm in dia that is 0.61 meter in dia with a center to center distance of about 1.5 meter that means that the piles are actually spaced uh, you know uh, the, the, as uh, discussed in the uh, while discussing the theory that uh, the efficacy of this uh, you know pile stabilized slopes depends upon the, the spacing of the slopes and location of the piles within the slope. So here it uh, says that uh, the sloping uh, the, the spacing of S, S is equal to 2.5 D approximately the 2.5 D was considered but uh, the larger the spacing uh, you know the piles will tend to behave like a individual uh, uh, you know individual piles. So uh, when the closer the spacing there is a possibility that arching develops into the picture. So uh, what will actually happen is that uh, uh, the piles will uh, uh, you know attract the load in the form of uh, you know uh, when they uh, when they undergo the soil undergoes arching along the uh, you know the region within the piles and that prevents uh, the movement of the piles um, you know the movement of the piles uh, the movement of the slope. So hence uh, the slope stability can be enhanced. So the stiffness of the pile is taken as uh, 16.55 mega Newton for uh, meter square and the stability analysis was performed by using John Boos method. So this is uh, the cross section of an unreinforced slope wherein uh, uh, the, the slope height uh, which is uh, you know by having one vertical uh, having a 30 degrees inclination the cohesion is about 23.94 kilo Pascals and friction angle of 10 degrees and gamma 19.63 kilo Newton per meter square was considered and uh, uh, here uh, this is a cross section of an unreinforced uh, slope and uh, the pile was uh, assumed to be located um, at uh, 5 meters uh, from the toe of the slope. Uh, there is a possibility that uh, the pile can be located uh, uh, you know at a uh, distance uh, it, uh, from the literature review it has been found out that the location if the location of the pile is at uh, uh, you know at the mid distance uh, from here there is a possibility that uh, there is a good formation of the good uh, uh, you know uh, reason for having uh, stability of a slope. But in case if the pile is actually uh, placed at the uh, you know crest of the slope and there is a possibility that if the slope is actually steep enough then there is a possibility that uh, it can undergo failure in front of the pile and the portion uh, you know beyond the pile may be protected but the, the pile with uh, you know uh, pile which is uh, portion which is actually beyond the pile may be subjected to failure. So the research study which is actually carried out at IIT Bombay reveals that uh, the if this is the distance LX if this is the distance LX and if this is the distance LL uh, L horizontal distance when the LX by L is equal to 0.5 approximately uh, you know the uh, maximum uh, uh, factor of safety and maximum performance uh, can be uh, ensured. So this is here the piles are actually placed in a single row and the, the space at a 1.5 meter distance. In fact here also there is a possibility that if the heads of the piles are connected and then that also contributes to the you know in additional stability and sometimes for some applications like in landslides where their deep seated failures are there the piles are actually installed and at the upper portion. Uh, the walls were actually connected and these are actually called as suppressor walls and this arrests the movement and uh, you know rock fall and any, any other events. So this is uh, the stability analysis results of the unreinforced slope for the given configuration and the properties uh, the uh, slope uh, the unreinforced slope uh, factor of safety obtained as around 1.107 and uh, the factor of safety reported by Asoids et al is uh, uh, is about 1.08 and uh, the stability analysis of a reinforced slope 
with pile placed at uh, 5 meter distance from the toe of the slope uh, wherein uh, it actually says that uh, the uh, you know the factor of safety has improved and it is about 1.295 in the present study and as reported by Asoyed et al is about 1.3. So this is actually found to be in uh, good agreement with uh, the results uh, published by Asoyed et al 1997. Now after having discussed the, the stability analysis uh, using uh, uh, piles and we also said that uh, one of the methods for enhancing the slope stability particularly the slopes uh, below the uh, you know berthing structures uh, where uh, unstable slopes can actually lead to the uh, you know movements of the soil and then uh, induce lateral forces onto the piles supporting the berthing structure. And this was one of the application where it was used in uh, Kandla and other areas where uh, this was actually used for uh, uh, increasing the stability of a slope. So we actually have discussed uh, this uh, uh, scheme saying that uh, if you are actually having uh, piles uh, if you are having granular piles and which are actually having uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, granular, uh, 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 granular charge which is actually having charge uh, you know uh, sizes from uh, uh, 10 mm uh, 10 mm to uh, 40 mm to 50 mm and a well graded mix if it is there there is a possibility that uh, the factor of safety can increase and then we also have discussed that uh, when we use the stone columns to stabilize an unstable slope uh, the pile the uh, granular piles which are actually placed can serve as a uh, restraining capacity as well as the you know they actually also have a capacity of uh, having uh, uh, you know adequate uh, uh, drainage so that uh, the pore water pressures which are which are actually uh, possible that you know they can build up during the uh, you know the construction of uh, a slope or in the uh, in the, in the uh, you know uh, in the field they can actually come uh, contribute to the dissipation of this uh, pore water pressure and thereafter uh, you know there can be an increase in the factor of safety also. So here uh, the slope stabilization by using stone columns here once again uh, you know this uh, you know the theory is actually shown this is actually one of the patterns of the arrangement where the triangular pattern is actually arranged like this here and uh, it can be seen that uh, the each pile each uh, granular pile or stone column contributes to the uh, you know certain area. So this is nothing but the diameter of the stone column to the influencing area and that is called as the area ratio. So here this is for the square layout and this is for the these two are for the, the triangular layout. But if you look into this here when there is a certain load and when you have got stone column material with high you know stiffness and clay or ground having you know low stiffness there is a uh, you know the stress concentration makes it uh, to attract more force that is uh, sigma stone uh, and uh, sigma stone and uh, sigma ground uh, uh, try to you know apportion the load which is actually applied on to the uh, you know the uh, uh, composite system. So by using uh, you know the uh, method we can actually find out the uh, you know the composite uh, shear strength parameters or average shear strength parameters. And the stability calculations are carried out by using the conventional slope stability analysis methods wherein we actually have assumed that piles uh, the stone columns has individual elements and uh, also uh, calculated properties by using the average shear strength parameters where C average is actually obtained as cohesion into 1 minus AR into cohesion of the uh, stone column but uh, as uh, stone column uh, is free from fines uh, and uh, so that is equal to 0. And similarly tan phi average is obtained based on the aspect ratio and the other parameters which are actually given. So these are notations have been already discussed and these are actually shown here once again in the stability analysis of the, the using stone columns. So the analysis problem which was considered is a, you know, a slope actually having 13.7 meter height and 13 degrees slope inclination and the stone columns are assumed to be 1 meter in diameter and the center to center spacing is about 3 meters and they are assumed to be in the triangular pattern and the stability analysis was performed by using John Booth's method. 
So considering the effect of inclusion of stone columns separately and by taking the respect to C fine gamma and values. So the both the cases were actually done. So here what has been done is that uh, uh, we actually have got uh, soil and uh, at number of locations uh, the stone columns placed in uh, uh, you know uh, at uh, within the slope were actually considered and the respective soil parameters were actually considered that is one way but uh, the method which is actually proposed uh, uh, for analyzing this is actually the calculating the average shear strength parameters based on the the uh, you know the uh, stress concentration factor and all so for triangular inst installation the influencing diameter can be obtained as 1.05 into spacing so here the spacing is actually assumed as uh, 3.15 meter hence uh, we can actually um, you know calculate uh, the influence diameter uh, so, so this 1.05 into spacing is 3 meters so the influence diameter is about 3.15 meters that is the you know the each uh, granular pile or stone column uh, you know caters the area which is equal, which caters the diameter which is equivalent to 3.15 meters and the area of the column which is nothing but the diameter of the stone column is about 1 meter uh, diameter so pi by 4 into 1 square which is about 0.7857 meter square and the area of the soil is uh, 7.8 meter square so area ratio which is nothing but a column divided by a column plus a soil so based on that what we have got is 0 0.092 and uh, the stress concentration factor is assumed as uh, n is equal to 6 and it actually varies from uh, you know 4 to uh, you know 10 uh, but here it is assumed as 6 and uh, the, the value of m uh, which is actually computed as uh, uh, the, the area replacement ratio into n that is stress concentration divided by 1 plus a into n minus 1 which is obtained as 0.38 so c equivalent is equal to 1 minus uh, a into uh, c soil plus a into c column so with that what we have got is that 27.24 kilo pascals similarly the tan pi equivalent is obtained as 1 minus m tan pi soil uh, plus m tan pi column so this is equivalent to pi equivalent is equal to 17.7 degrees so this is these are the you know the resultant parameters uh, for the uh, you know uh, zone which is actually influenced by the uh, you know presence of stone columns in the slope so this is the cross section of the unreinforced uh, slope is actually shown here wherein uh, we have uh, um, the same properties uh, 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 which are actually taken uh, the properties are uh, clay as actually having c 30 kilo pascals and phi is equal to 0 and uh, the uh, sand actually having uh, uh, you know properties of friction angle, uh, friction angle of 30 degrees and gamma 20 kilo per meter cube was considered now uh, method 1 analysis considering the stone columns to be the individual inclusions within the slope and uh, uh, here uh, four rows of stone columns were actually shown here so this is the zone which is uh, you know strengthened by the uh, stone columns here and uh, then by using method 2 the analysis uh, considering the slopes to be homogenized with equivalent values of c and phi uh, with the positions of the uh, stone columns and the rest of the portions here the properties of that of soil were given but uh, here in this zone the equivalent properties like uh, c is equal to 30 kilo pascals uh, the, the, the c is equal to 27.24 and phi equivalent is about 17.7 uh, .7 degrees was actually given so uh, you know then uh, the results are actually compared with the for uh, without any stone columns with individual uh, stone columns and uh, with uh, homogenized equivalent values of c and phi so this this particular uh, figure shows the cross section of a slope uh, with uh, you know so without any stone columns that is actually an unforced slope the factor of safety is obtained about 1.024 so hence there is a need for improvement of the uh, you know factor of safety uh, in the in the particular example uh, the slope stabilization by using stone columns was considered now here this is the uh, you know the cross section of a slope which uh, result of a factor of safety where the slope is considered the effect of inclusion of the four individual individual stone columns which is actually shown so where the factor of safety were found to be increased but uh, wherein uh, the factor of safety is obtained is about 1.304 now the this is uh, you know the 
uh, by taking this uh, equivalent properties in the zone influenced by the stone columns. So the factor of safety was found to improve wherein you have the factor of safety which is about 1.432 uh, with uh, uh, the presence of stone columns. So, so what is with, with these examples what we have understood is that the, the uh, in designing this uh, slopes with stone columns first we have to decide what is the diameter of the stone column and uh, depending upon the, the method of installation the type of uh, installation need to be selected. Once it is selected uh, then you know the we have to see the based on the uh, you know the stone charge uh, properties and then the gradation we need to select what is the uh, you know the possible friction angle for the stone metal uh, which are used in uh, stone columns uh, the friction angle actually varies from 38 to 42 degrees and uh, which are assumed to be you know placed at uh, maximum dry density and then uh, then the proper layout has to be selected generally the triangular layout was found to be you know give uh, uh, you know uniform uh, uh, you know improvement uh, in the uh, in stabilizing uh, uh, behavior so uh, then after having selected then we have to see the uh, calculate the average shear strength parameters by using the average method which is suggested for to get the C equivalent and phi equivalent and this is depend upon the layout of the stone columns and if the stone columns are spaced farther and if the stone column diameter is smaller then there is a possibility that their factor of safety may not actually have much improvement and uh, when we actually have got this uh, improved area uh, the zone uh, increases but there is a possibility that uh, the factor of safety increases for the entire slope. So this is one you know application wherein you know the slope stabilization can be enhanced by using this presence of stone columns. So in the particular analysis what has not been taken is that the presence of stone columns when there is you know the seeping water or when the slope is saturated when there is a possibility that these stone columns can also act like act like drains and in that case they actually have got uh, hybrid uh, uh, effects one is called uh, uh, you know for drainage other one is for reinforcing the slope. So after having discussed some typical uh, methods of uh, you know the slope stability uh, what we try to look into is that you know the how these uh, you know uh, earthquake loading can affect the slope stability. So in order to investigate the effect of earthquake shaking on slope stability a coupled analysis was carried out by using uh, uh, you know uh, two modules of uh, Geo Studio 2012 one is uh, quick W other one is uh, slope W and here a typical uh, slope configuration was selected and was subjected to earthquake loading for about uh, 10 seconds and the, the stress generated during the event was uh, investigated by quick W. And was, was, and was fed to slope W to study the stability of and permanent uh, deformation of the slope. So uh, this uh, particular analysis was carried out by using uh, uh, you know the slope W and quick W and this is the typical uh, slope configuration selected in uh, quick W uh, where uh, the soil slope uh, with, which, uh, with the following properties is actually shown here. And this is the input horizontal earthquake record which is actually given and vertical component of acceleration has been ignored. So here with the time seconds and then acceleration which is this motion is actually given as an input for estimating for seeing this effect on the, you know, the displacements and then subsequently the factor of safety was calculated. So this is the deformed mesh at the end of the 10 seconds of earthquake load the this is actually magnified by 150 times. So it can be seen that uh, the slope actually has undergone deformations. So the displacements observed at the crest of the slope at selected time intervals during uh, earthquake were actually plotted. So it can be seen that uh, the crest displacements are actually ranging from uh, uh, minus 0.1 meter to plus 0.1 meter because of the uh, you know subjected to the ground motion. So the variation uh, is actually reported like this which is uh, computed by using a quick W module 
and uh, this is the displacement observed at the toe of the slope at selected time intervals during uh, earthquake uh, wherein it actually shows uh, the toe movement is about uh, minus 0 0.04 meters to plus 0 0.04 meters uh, uh, which is actually reported as the maximum here. So after computing the uh, static and dynamic uh, ground stresses developed during uh, earthquake in uh, quick W and by using the equivalent linear dynamic approach the stability analysis was carried out by using uh, slope W and uh, an initial uh, static stability analysis was performed by using quick W generated stresses to establish the in situ factor of safety for the slope and the next what has been done is that the variation of the factor of safety with earthquake shaking was monitored in slope W by using the uh, quake W Newmark deformation analysis that means that the deformed uh, uh, configurations were feeded and uh, the analysis was actually carried out by using slope W and the rate of change of velocity acceleration and deformation with the time was also studied. So in this uh, particular analysis uh, what has been done is that uh, you know uh, this is actually found to you know this particular analysis is found to be very applicable when we are actually constructing uh, uh, say canal embankments for uh, you know for when you are actually constructing embankments on uh, soils which are actually prone for uh, uh, earthquake. So wherein uh, you know if the, if the embankment uh, which is actually coming above ground level is about say more than 5 meters then there is a need for uh, you know performing this dynamic analysis and uh, once this dynamic analysis is actually performed then uh, suppose if case you are actually doing uh, uh, you know construction by using uh, embankment construction filling above the ground level and then we have to ensure that uh, the crust displacements or toe displacements are within the tolerable limits even after subjecting to a certain uh, ground motion. Um, in such uh, situations uh, we have to see that uh, if the uh, you know the subsoil properties are inadequate then you know there is a need for improving the subsoil by using an appropriate uh, uh, you know improvement uh, measures and then enhance the and maintain the you know the calc uh, compute the stability analysis uh, uh, you know with uh, this particular uh, cases. So this was actually done in one of the projects wherein uh, uh, for the canal uh, uh, embankment slopes uh, where it actually has been taken that uh, the uh, limits for this uh, uh, you know the lateral displacements uh, obtained from the dynamic analysis were actually set like uh, you know horizontal displacement if, it, if at all if it is there. Uh, then it, it has been uh, said that it should not be uh, you know more than the thickness of the filter which is uh, provided in the canal embankment and uh, vertical displacement was found to be you know uh, should not be more than the freeboard which is actually maintained in that particular embankment. So if, uh, if the displacement which are actually resulted after subjected to dynamic loading if they are less than these uh, you know set uh, parameters then we can actually ensure that uh, you know the so and so configuration is actually stable against uh, so called uh, the earthquake loading and if uh, uh, the particular uh, slopes which are actually being constructed either in situ or, uh, uh, or the uh, slopes which are going to be constructed then appropriate uh, uh, the stabilization measures like uh, you know uh, after construction if uh, they are found to be. Uh, you know the analysis was the the, the treat the uh, proper analysis was not done uh, during construction then if they are found that uh, you know they are vulnerable for failure then appropriate uh, slope stabilization method need to be uh, you know considered and then used in the analysis. So here uh, the slope properties uh, used in the uh, the slope stability analysis the slip surface was specified by using the entry and exit method and uh, uh, which is actually shown here then uh, uh, the initial factor of safety of the slope in static condition is actually obtained as about 1.131 then uh, this is the you know particular uh, uh, graph which actually shows the variation of the factor of safety during the earthquake event where the factor of safety uh, with the time which is found to be like uh, uh, you know varies uh, uh, with the time. So the lowest factor of safety for the critical slip surface uh, is below 0 0.8 and that is about 3 seconds that means that the slope would have already undergone the failure uh, into the shaking and highest factor of safety is 1.7 at about 2 seconds into the shaking. So that particular uh, you know 
configuration might have ensured the high factor safety but uh, at uh, the about 3 seconds itself it is found that um, uh, you know the slope is actually subjected to failure and uh, the average acceleration during the shaking period which is uh, obtained as uh, uh, you know which is plotted here so in this uh, what has been done is that uh, where the time in uh, seconds is plotted on the x axis with the average acceleration so the accelerations are in the range of minus 2 meter per second square to plus 0.2 meter per second square and uh, uh, this is actually shown uh, uh, this is during the shaking period so variation of the factor of safety with the average acceleration so it can be seen that uh, the factor of safety was found to uh, you know decrease with an increase in the acceleration and the yield acceleration is about 0.085 where the factor of safety 1 is actually obtained the factor of safety is inversely proportional to the average acceleration so with an increase in uh, uh, you know the acceleration the factor of safety uh, uh, average acceleration the factor of safety is found to decrease and uh, the yield acceleration uh, for the given problem is found to be with the factor of safety is equal to 1 is about 0.085. Now these are the plot this is the plot which is actually showing velocity variation with the time and velocity versus time plot during the shaking period is obtained by integrating the area under the curve and when the average acceleration corresponds to yield acceleration. And these are the permanent observations observed during the shaking so in this case uh, you know this uh, time which is in seconds and then uh, deformation which are actually shown so the permanent deformations were found to increase uh, you know uh, but at the end of say third at the third second or so and then uh, found to be about 0 0.2 0 0.18 meters and then which increased it to about 0 0.237 the maximum value of uh, permanent deformation uh, is recorded as about 0 0.237 so this was actually obtained by integrating the area under the velocity graph when there is a positive velocity so within the positive velocity zone uh, the whatever the area which is actually there and over a period of time that has been included integrated to get the different deformation plot so the permanent deformations observed during the shaking is found to be about this value so this analysis was actually uh, done uh, by using untrained uh, dynamic uh, deformation analysis according to Kramer 1996 uh, this type of analysis is only appropriate if there is a less than about 15 percent degradation in the soil strength uh, due to shaking and uh, this type of analysis is not considered in phases when there is a large build up of pore water pressure which in turn may lead to large strength losses causing soil to liquefy. So in this uh, particular uh, you know the uh, lecture what we try to understand is that uh, the slope stability analysis methods uh, uh, we actually have uh, you know many slope stability analysis method like uh, starting from uh, uh, you know the method of slices and then uh, extending to uh, uh, the Swedish method of slices and then extending to Bishop's method of slices and then to uh, John Boos method and uh, Sarma's method and uh, then then many uh, you know these uh, many uh, investigators actually have attempted to incorporate this uh, reinforcement uh, elements within the slopes by modifying the uh, you know the Bishop's method of slices or John Boos method of slices and uh, nowadays uh, there is also the horizontal uh, slide slope uh, analysis methods actually have come that is called uh, uh, you know the horizontal method of slices in some cases uh, particularly uh, when we are actually trying to do with uh, you know, slope stability analysis by using uh, you know geosynthetic uh, uh, reinforced slopes and uh, this is actually applied uh, uh, for by many investigators that is the method of uh, slope stability analysis by using uh, uh, horizontal method of slices uh, the uh, listeners can actually uh, refer to Shagoli's uh, method uh, in uh, 2000 wherein he actually has presented about uh, uh, you know the authors actually have presented about the method of slices by using uh, you know the horizontal method of slices. So now after having uh, considered these methods and then when uh, different uh, methods like we have discussed about uh, uh, you know some information like uh, the nail slopes and uh, you know anchored enforced slopes and then uh, so here also we actually have got different possibilities like the when the anchors are uh, you know active anchors or passive anchors 
For example, uh, active anchors are the some uh, example is nothing but uh, the pre-stressed anchors. So in that case, there is a possibility that certain type of uh, the pre-stress is induced onto the top surface of the slope, and that actually contributes to the additional factor of safety. Then also, these uh, methods can be extended uh, for. Uh, uh, understanding uh, the deformation behavior particularly uh, in selecting the proper uh, layout of say nails where you know uh, whether uh, what should be the vertical spacing what should be the horizontal spacing and what is the nail inclination which is required to, to be adopted. So if these uh, slopes which are actually constructed are going to be constructed in the areas which are actually prone for earthquakes then uh, the an appropriate uh, dynamic analysis is required to be performed. Then in that case the incorporation of this uh, uh, you know these uh, uh, the analysis can be performed with uh, let us say once uh, we ensure that an optimum nail inclination and optimum layout of the nail and that particular nail reinforced slope can be you know subjected to the dynamic analysis wherein uh, the dynamic uh, the with the resultant uh, method of uh, slope stability resulting due to uh, you know the reinforcement effect of nails we can see the you know whether the crest settlements or deformations of the uh, slopes are under uh, control or not in case in case if they are not then you know there is a requirement for the change in the design. Then we also have discussed about the slope stability analysis by using uh, uh, you know the stone columns and uh, it appears that uh, there is a uh, need for doing further work in uh, refining this particular uh, uh, you know. Uh, method particularly by using uh, uh, in for slope stability analysis using nails uh, using uh, stone columns and uh, the another important application what has been discussed is that the slope stability analysis by using uh, lime piles or lime columns uh, wherein uh, the limited uh, you know data is actually available and particularly for uh, when the slopes like expansive uh, soil slopes when they are actually subjected to lateral uh, movements and uh, this is one of the viable options if the expansive soil is actually not having adequate uh, uh, amount of uh, sulphates then there is a possibility that we can actually consider this uh, using uh, uh, the lime columns for increasing the uh, you know the stability. So in this particular uh, uh, module of uh, slope stability we try to introduce ourselves to different methods of slope stability analysis as well as uh, the uh, you know the uh, different analysis methods and we actually have solved the number of examples wherein uh, particularly without any uh, you know strengthening measure and then with strengthening measure. So this actually gives an idea about the important of this uh, particular module and uh, where this uh, techniques uh, which were actually discussed can be used for this existing slopes or also for the uh, you know the new slopes which are under construction.